where we last left off, a group of true warriors were defeated. Now Riddle, the Aesoki that fell victim to their strikes, tries to get up. Kikdrash offers a hand, which she takes in relief. I don't know who you guys are, but I can't thank you enough. I'm Riddle, by the way. Can I get your names? The Aesoki reveals. I'm Arok. Your compatriot here is Kik. The grumpy magician is Zind, and the mysterious dark hero is Sadeth. We were on our way to adventures in Junk. We're looking for work. Riddle's eyes light up. Well, I happen to be the one in charge of adventures in Junk. It's just around the corner. Wanna go there with me and talk about a potential job I might have for you guys? And so, our heroes follow Riddle into a small storefront, where a dimmed out neon sign says Adventures in Junk. Riddle unlocks the door and invites everyone in. Looking behind her, once all of them are inside. The look of the office seems abandoned, as if no one has been here for a few days. Posters of junk scavenging decorate the walls, as well as shelves with some statues made of junk. There's also a small credit powered dispenser of holotags that light up with programmable names on them. Are you thirsty? I got coffee. Water and some cans of days, comments Riddle. Zayn silently reaches for the water bottle. Sareth operates the coffee machine to get himself a full cup, and Aro can kick make a toast with their cans of days. Okay, comments Riddle, observing the party making themselves at home so quickly. Once everyone is accommodated, she explains the deal. A few months back, this showbat named the Trulu came with a bunch of his guys to benefit from extorting junk tourism agencies. Normally we deal with these people quickly, but he was different. Most of the other agencies are already under his deals, as he's aiming to become the crime kingpin of the town. She takes a deep breath and continues. He's chased away all my guides, I'm the only one left, but I'm not gonna let him get away with this. I worked too hard to be here. A pause is made as she takes one more look at our heroes. You seem to be new here. Well, nonetheless, you are most likely already on the true warrior's bad side, now that you have rescued me. So how about helping me one more time? It pays, rest assured. The party looks at each other, their eyes conveying what message. I mean, are you? And they all seem determined to do this. Arok is the first one to break the silence. We will help. What's the job? Riddle resumes explaining. A few days ago, this historian from Absalom Station came to my office, offering a generous sum of credits for an undiscovered piece of junk that, according to them, could change the galaxy. The problem is, well, they've gone missing. And our job is to find this android, correct? Asks Signed. Yes, if you do, there will be 500 credits at each of your names, Riddle reveals, despite the fact that half a thousand creds isn't exactly a fortune, if they are spent carefully, they could keep the party alive and under a roof for almost a year. Very well, what can you tell us about them? Kick inquires, pulling out a comm unit to take notes. Let's see. Riddle rubs her chin, recalling details. Medium height, skinny, they had like golden braids and golden circuits across their skin too, that's all I remember. With that information, Kik notes down and puts the comm unit back in his pocket. Very well, then I think we can try getting some clues before sundown. There's still a good handful of hours of daylight. Let's get to it, team. Sareth, are you with us? Arok says, incorporating himself. Sareth nods. Consider me part of the team for this one. I wanna get to the end of this. Arok nods, pleased. Before you go, have this, exclaims Riddle, tossing a junk looking item to kick, winking at him. Our operative is thankful no one can see him blushing below the fur. It's a breakaway Aegis. It's like a shield but a bit less tardy. I wish I had it with me before, so I want you guys to have it. I hope you won't need it though. He nods, slightly flustered, as the party makes their way out. Once out, the four heroes agree to reconvene at sundown, in the very spot they are standing. The searching begins. 
Zayn decides to ask around, hopefully the locals have anything to say. The D20 comes up 18, and a Dina score of 5 in diplomacy, he scores an amazing 23. Arok decides to look for one of the other businesses that the true warriors have held hostage, getting some fear tactics in place to threaten the owners just to get information about the android. The D20 comes a whopping 19, which added to his intimidation of plus 5 becomes an outstanding 24. Kick takes a different route, hacking into the infosphere and hijacking local cameras to see if there's any visuals of the android. The D20 comes up a 7 this time, with his computer's mod being a plus 8. A total of 15 does not cut it, so Kick does not manage it to locate the android via camera. Sareth simply hits the street, looking for any single evidence that may give a hint about the android. Dice comes up another 7 which added to his perception of 6 is insufficient, so no luck. An hour has passed, and the team communicates their findings over the comm units. Apparently the android historian is named Buddy13, and that they have been to a local hotel called Ixomander's Throne. They also find out that Buddy13 has visited Othul, a weapons dealer before disappearing. After a 12 minute break, they hit the streets again. With this new intel, Sarah decides to check on Ixomander's throne, repeating his perception check. This time the die comes up at 3 for a total of 9 perception. Still nothing. Kick, on the other hand, attempts to hack O'Toole's cameras, rolling a solid 16 and with his plus 6 goes up to 24. Hail, just a post editing note, uh, 16 and 6 is not 24, it's actually 22. Still hit the mark, but you know, it's... Uh, I'm not the best at math. <laughs> Anyways, um, I would like you to... Uh, t I would like to tell you, actually, that if you're liking so far this game and this series of videos, please leave a like. And if you would like to, you can subscribe to see more of this in your feed soon enough. Thank you for your time, and we'll resume the story. Kik learns that Vari13 has last seen headed towards the car yards. Once Kik relays this info, the group meets on an interpoint on the streets, while the sky begins to turn red. By the time they manage to reunite, Zind heals Arok with a spell, so they can continue their journey. Kik looks around, realizing something odd. Guys, where are all the people? Well, 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 says an unfamiliar voice. Look who it is, the little bunch that Riddle has brought from outside to protect their shitty agency. As our party turns around, no less than four true warriors are approaching from the other end of the street. I'll give you a last chance, outsiders, says one of them. You can leave now, or you can suffer the consequences. Our heroes aren't too keen on listening to criminals, however, they may have a non-violent way of resolving this. Sadith steps forward. I have a better offer. You can... But before he can finish his proposal, the true warriors are already approaching with their weapons drawn. Combat sequence starts. Arok picks up the initiative, dashing forward against one of the two human true warriors, slashing with his longsword for 8 damage as his foe reels in pain. Next up, Sareth follows, with his dark solar weapon in hand, and in a quick strike, the other true warrior human suffers another 7 damage. Reactively, one of the Aesoki foes opens fire against Arok, seeing him still wounded from the last encounter, and chips away 2 HP from him. Sign does not take kindly to that, opening a barrage of shots against the perpetrator. Non hit, however. Kick jumps to take cover behind a parked hoverguard as he aims against the true warrior Arok was dealing with. From the very shadows, he strikes with a laser shot, and by having activated his trick attack, deals an additional D4 for a total of 6 damage. Leaving the ganger so beaten up, he is starting to turn around. The second Aesoki true warrior aims for Sain, having left himself an easy target. He peeks out of the corner he's hiding from and shoots, but misses by a far reach. The slowest of the true warriors that's facing Sareth readies his tactical baton, but the Solarian steps back just in time. 
Donald you got Sally Tasks with a grimace of disgust. The beaten up to warrior, seeing his chances, decides to run away from the fight, leaving his teammates to do the job. That leaves Arok a singular moment to survey the field and chooses to step forward, facing the Aisoki that hit him prior. We have a score to settle, pal, says menacingly as he swings the longsword, hitting the Aisoki for no less than 7 damage. Sareth follows up, performing a combo of strikes upon the last human standing. The receiver blocks them, quite under pressure. Meanwhile, the Aisoki facing Arok tries to put some distance and fires again, hitting on the other shoulder for another 2 damage. You sleeper little mumbled Sarah. All the while Sain advances to take cover behind another hovercar on the other side of the nasty street. Seeing that the Aesoki that Arok is chasing isn't behind cover anymore, he takes a steady shot. However, it seems his foe is more slippery than everyone anticipated. Kick, still shrouded by the dim shadows of the hovercar, attempts one more shot from the dark against that dodgy Aesoki, one that normally wouldn't hit. But thanks to the fact this is a trick attack, the target is caught off guard and receives 7 damage. After that shot, the young anger looks around, realizing this isn't the fight he's gonna win, so he runs away too. The Aesoki true warrior that's left opens fire twice against Tarok, hitting none. Lastly, the human true warrior left looks for an opening inside its combo and counter attacks with one of his own. His pile of anger makes him attack twice, striking the first time for 7 damage and critically striking the second for 12, bringing Sareth to unconsciousness. Arok, whose victory was denied by a cowardly Aisoki, redirects his aggression at this human ganger, striking him two times, but his blind rage gets the best of him and misses both. Sareth lays on the ground, but Saint, coming up next, approaches him and uses his last spell to get him out of the gates of death for 4 HP healed. Kick knows what's at stake and takes another shot at the human foe, hitting him with a laser in the wrist for 7 damage, preventing him from reacting this turn. The remaining Aisoki takes aim against Sain, seeing that he is the healer and chips away 6 of his hit points. However, the last true warrior to go, the human, is too bloody to continue and runs away. Arok, annoyed at this, strides towards the last Isoki and swings for 8 slashing. Sarev manages to get on his feet and sign the attempts to one shot at the remaining foe, bringing him to the ground. Battle sequence over. Shit, this fight was a mess, matters signed. We should leave before the authorities arrive, maybe bring a ganger with us? For interrogation, Kik suggests. We will, but Sareth, Adok says, turning to the elf. You need medical assistance, go get checked and we'll deal with this scum. Sareth doesn't complain, he just nods, as he agrees with the plan. Everyone leaves the streets for the night. Tomorrow things will clear up, if the interrogation goes well. Hey everyone, thanks for listening and thanks for supporting this one more episode of Junkers Delight Solo. If you like what I do, please, again, consider leaving a like and if you really enjoy my stuff, subscribe. This is probably one of my passion projects, if not the passion project I'm following right now, and I really appreciate any support I can get. Thank you everyone for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.